Meshes are everywhere in life, tiny patterns that let air, water, or particles pass through while keeping things separated. From filters and sieves to ventilation covers and lightweight structures, meshes are super useful. Did you know that you can 3D print a working sieve without even modeling it in CAD? All it takes is a simple slicer trick. By setting the top and bottom layers to zero and increasing the infill to something like 20 or 30 percent, your part becomes a mesh by default. I like using gyroid infill for this since it's both visually interesting and functional. It lets water or particles pass through while keeping structure. I tried this method while designing a cascade planter. Each layer needed to drain water without letting soil or other materials fall through. Instead of designing a mesh from scratch, I simply disabled the top and bottom layers and printed a flat disc with infill exposed. Also, I changed the number of perimeters to change the width of the edge. It worked surprisingly well. Lightweight, fast to print, and no CAD required. But this approach has its limits. The mesh you get from infill is only one perimeter thick, meaning it's fragile. You also have no control over the thickness of individual layer lines or the shape of the mesh. You're stuck with whatever the slicer generates based on the pattern and percentage. Next to it is a second version modeled directly in Fusion 360. This time I built a mesh with intentional geometry, thicker walls, specific hole sizes, and a frame around the edge. It took longer to set up, but the result was a more robust part that I could customize and reuse later. I could easily scale it, change the pattern, or integrate it into more complex assemblies. I printed both versions and tested them side by side. The slicer based mesh is definitely faster, but weaker and less predictable. The CAD mesh takes more effort, but the strength and design flexibility are absolutely worth it for more demanding applications. So which one should you use? It depends on the project. If you need something quick and temporary, the slicer trick might be all you need. But if you're making something structural, reusable, or finely tuned, go with the CAD mesh. Your 3D printer can handle both. It's just a matter of choosing the right approach for what you're building. Anyways, I hope you learned something from that, or at least found it interesting. Check out the links in the description for more things related to this video and 3D printing meshes. And real quick, if you don't have a 3D printer or you need to create meshes and more demanding materials, check out the channel sponsor PCBWay. Simply export the 3D model as an STL, drag and drop it onto their website and pick the materials to your heart's desire, and your personal mesh will arrive at your door in no time. Use the link below for that. If you learned something cool today, go ahead and smash that like button like it's your 3D printer smashing through a failed print. And hey, if you want to see more printing hacks and robot shenanigans, hit subscribe because my content gets better with every filament spool I run out of. With that said, thank you very much for watching. My channel has grown a good bit since I've started, and that's thanks to all of you guys.